Good morning. My name is Henry Gidney, and I'm delighted to meet you. Um, I thought I'd give you a little bird's eye view of what I've been up to for a while, and um, I look forward to meeting you. So, I was born in Igathpuri in India, in the Western Ghats, beautiful part of the world. And um, uh, Daddy used to be an um, engine driver, Irish engine driver. And um, I had a wonderful early childhood there, uh, playing with the Chokras. I remember, and these are all fond memories because, I mean, in introducing myself to you, I've moved on so far away from these wonderful days. I sometimes just reminisce and um, maybe long to get back to those days, but they're gone. So, chokras, we'd play gully danda, we'd play marbles. It was an absolute wonderful um, few years. And then, of course, um, I went over to the Baldwin Boys School in uh, Bangalore, and then to St. Peter's School. They were also wonderful years, of course, but these are the rough and tumble of boys. And um, Henry Gidney was finding himself and, um, well, discovering that um, life as an Anglo-Indian was, uh, was really quite different. And that um, maybe the Henry Gidney of the early days of playing marbles was uh, moving away from his origins. So, of course, then I went to Edinburgh for my schooling for a short time. But there it was, into the fridge, I felt, freezing, cold. But it wasn't just the temperature. It was away, away from, well, home. But home was confusing. I mean, was England my home? was Edinburgh my home. Uh, certainly, if I listened to Mummy and Daddy, that was the case. I wasn't quite sure. I don't know, neither were they. So these were heady days in, in Edinburgh. I was being, um, I was discovering in myself really, um, an interest in learning and in education and, of course, in the future and having a, a place in a larger world. And dare I say, a very important urge to prove myself. I mean, I, you know, I look back and I think, you know, at the age of 16, I was in the Calcutta Medical College. Now, you know, I was rubbing shoulders with some very bright people. I got a first class honours. I won the gold medal in the Calcutta Medical College. Would you believe that? I sometimes have to scratch myself to, to really reminisce about those heady days. Um, public uh, health was my interest in research and study. I wonder, I think that, that public health idea came from seeing my father, engine driver, working long hours, coming home late, sometimes not at all. And, and my concern for his health. And then of course, I went into ophthalmology, a study of eye diseases, away to Oxford, would you believe? Cambridge was where I did my study in public health and ophthalmology, the door opened in Oxford. Research. I got quite interested in research in ophthalmology. Um, I'm jumping ahead a little bit, but I did open the private hospital, uh, um, an eye hospital in uh, Bombay some years later. And that was one of my dearest achievements. Just helping, helping, helping the people of India. See, I was in this whole identity move, um, just always questioning, am I Indian? Am I British? And that's where that um, 
that Anglo-Indian hyphen became quite a key in my identity. The hyphen joins the Anglo and the Indian, the cross identity. And that was my struggle. I believe now it was a very positive struggle. I think most struggles are positive struggles. It certainly this was one. A fellow of the Royal uh, Faculty of Edinburgh, uh, a great achievement, um, came back to India, left India for study, left India for, for examinations and representations. This was a very, very fortunate existence. Um, as I just mentioned, I opened a private eye hospital in, in Bombay, which was, I, I keep coming back to that memory, that memory of being able to, being able to assist, being able to help. Um, I guess in all my achievements, I would have loved to have had a magic wand to just cast over India and get rid of the poverty that I saw, the difficulties that I saw the local people encounter. And then, of course, I saw the Anglo-Indian community encountering the difficulties too. Of course, in all this personal struggle of identity and of making a difference that I had, there runs that parallel of achievement. So I was knighted in 1931. So yes, that's right, you're meeting Sir Henry Gidney. Thank you very much. Um, the existence that I had then with the army, with the medical um, fraternity was a very privileged one, but um, the overwhelming urge was to help, to help others to help the Anglo-Indian community. I could see a community that, as I said, I was identifying with that Anglo and the Indian. I could see incredible uh, possibilities. The Anglo-Indian community were rich in experience, in their skills of using the English language, which was absolutely vital. Um, their skills in a range of areas, and I would like to, I was, very interested in promoting the fact that Anglo-Indians could mix it with anyone. Not only in the sporting fields, in their great achievements in hockey, and of course, socially, they were very well known. I mean, dare I say, I enjoyed going to dances on a regular basis, on uh, fraternizing with, with friends and colleagues, but of course, in the dances, um, I was particularly popular, dare I say, as um, a favourite uh, foxtrot and the waltz were my favourites. But I need to balance that by saying that the Anglo-Indian community that I wished to promote, the young Anglo-Indians that I wished to encourage, were very accomplished in a range of areas, and I wished to see them prosper in the area of academia doing research, achieving. Um, as you can imagine, those days of playing Gully Danda and marbles with the chokras on the street was so far beyond, uh, behind me. Um, that sense of nostalgia uh, brings me to the point of, of wanting to see communities, but certainly the Anglo-Indian community, achieve, to have opportunities, to have support, to have role models. And uh, in speaking of role models, I mean, I can think of no one better than the very talented Frank Anthony, who I am in the process of anointing as the next leader of the Anglo-Indian community. A voice in Parliament, a voice in the politics of India, carving up a space for Anglo-Indians to have prosperous options that they could also choose from. Um, 
I was a member of the Legislative Assembly in India in 1921. Um, I started the Anglo-Indian Domiciled European Association, which I was very proud to uh, be chair of. And the inaugural chair of that, um, of that association, which um, I see um, Mr. Frank Anthony as taking over. Um, I hope I can commend to you the need for us to be working together to promote achievements in what we can do for fellow citizens, not just Anglo-Indians, Indians, not just Indians, Europeans, people of mixed race, being inclusive in our approach to un our understanding that as a joint force, as we link, we prosper. I would like to see that to be my legacy. Thank you. Uh, let me check if it's uh, time for a bit of char. Got a char, maybe? Hopefully.